How's it going, everybody? Happy Friday. Uh, belated happy Thanksgiving. Holy cow. Okay, first of all, a few things are different, obviously. I had a little haircut this week, so none of the flowing locks anymore. Trim things up. Two, don't got my cowboy hat on this week. And uh, why is that, you might ask? Well, because I am doing this broadcast with these brand new Plantronics uh, Voyager Focus UC headset. It's awesome. So it doesn't really work too well with the cowboy hat, though. Um, but man, I use XSplit recording to get these shows going, at least until I'm doing a live broadcast. And it's a pretty good tool so far, but trying to get the right uh, combination of settings, I am not a sound master at all. So getting this to all work with the headset and my system sound, what a mess. Anyway, finally done. Um, I was surprised at how busy of a week it was actually in the community, especially for being a holiday week here in the U.S. Uh, one of the things that made it busy was that I also realized it is only a holiday week here in the U.S. It's not so much in the UK. Uh, we had a UK customer and uh, 4.30 in the morning, I was on a customer call Thanksgiving Day to uh, to have a discussion about some things. So um, uh, cheers. Cheers to all you in the UK who are missing out on the awesomeness of Thanksgiving. But anyway, um, let's dig in here because like I said, it's it's been pretty busy this week. Uh, first thing, I kind of want to do a little bit of a review on this headset. I am loving this. Uh, if you guys watched one of my earlier uh, uh, podcasts about this, I went to the Link Users Group uh, meetup in Charlotte. And at the end of it, it was my first one. Great time. Had a really good time. At the end of it, there was a raffle for some gear. And there was a Plantron Plantronics rep on site. And uh, I won one of the raffle drawings and got to choose my selection of devices from the Plantronics uh, rep's list of devices there. And uh, this was what she highly recommended based on uh, me working from home, all the different needs I have day to day with audio. And oh my gosh, it was an awesome recommendation. I am loving this. Uh, the Bluetooth on it has been great. I am always paired up with both my phone and the laptop. I playing Pandora. The sound is amazing. I feel like I'm in a theater, but I, I'll play Pandora for music. I'll get a phone call. I'll easily just tap the headset to answer my call, hang up the call, my music starts playing. Uh, if I get a link or Skype for business call coming through, bam, answer that, Pandora automatically stops. Um, and the call quality on my Skype for business and link calls has been impeccable, as has my regular phone calls that I have coming through. So uh, using another soft phone piece of software. So uh, it's been it's been awesome. And I love it. It's intuitive. You take the headphones off and it stops playing whatever music you were listening to. You put them right back on and it detects you got the headset back on and it starts playing your music again. It's these are awesome. I had someone ask me on Twitter, um, you know, wow, sounds really good. But man, I, I didn't realize 300 bucks. Is it worth it? Uh, honestly, I've never been someone who would have invested very heavily into a headset. I just use whatever the free thing was the company gave me. This has opened my eyes to what quality audio is. And while I can't say that I've made a purchase for a headset like that before, I definitely would have to give it serious consideration now if there was some new, better, more awesome thing that was out there that I, I really wanted. It may just be worth the money. So if you're shopping, you're in the market for uh for a very good quality headset that gives you some walking distance, pairs with your phone, pairs with your laptop uh, via Bluetooth, and has amazing qual quality for your uh, your Link and Skype for Business calls, definitely would be a, a proponent of the uh, Plantronics Voyager Focus UC edition. All right, let's move past that little review. There was a few things, quite a few things on Twitter and LinkedIn this week. And the first one I wanted to touch on was a tweet out there by at MyLinkLab. This is James Cousin in Australia, I believe. He's a Microsoft MVP, and his Twitter handle is at MyLinkLab. Um, and he is working on a replacement for the DHCP util tool. Um, and what this tool currently does is it goes and generates values for you that you will need uh, to set up in your DHCP server, Windows DHCP server, um, specifically so that your 
uh, audio devices out there can go and register with DHCP and and get all and get working in your Skype for Business or Link environment. Um, the phones really rely on DHCP, and there's a couple options that need to be set. Uh, specifically, option 120 and 43 are two big ones. So the DHCP util tool goes out and generates the values for both option 120 and option 43. And uh, and then, for instance, option 120, it gives you a list of your SIP servers. All right. So this tells your phone uh, where to go, where, where to go for SIP servers so that it can be used with Link Skype for Business. At any rate, um, the current DHCP util tool uh, goes out there, generates those values, sets those values on your DHCP server. Uh, it will allow you to test your DHCP server config to see what you've got set up and then also clean up the DHCP server config uh, for values that are related to link server, like options 120, option 43. I've never used the tool myself or messed with it, to be perfectly honest, full disclosure, but apparently it's not that great and uh, it could use use some upgrading or use some finesse. And so James gave us a little bit of a preview via a picture that he posted on Twitter of what he's working on to, to make that a little more clean, a little more user friendly, a more desirable tool. And it looks pretty nice. So good job there, James. He said he's working on it. It's coming soon. So stay tuned. And if you are someone who uh, would be taking advantage of that tool on a regular basis, maybe something you want to start leveraging in your own environments. So uh, thank you, James. Again, go check him out on Twitter, uh, at MyLinkLab. Got some good stuff going on there. Also, his website, www.myskypelab.com. Uh, like other things in the Link world, it looks like he uh, went through a little rebranding once uh, Link turned to Skype for business. So, all right, moving on from there. I talked about Mac client last week and some of the things we were hoping to find out from the kind of big announcement that was being done via the Skype for Business meeting broadcast. And so there was some good information that came out of that. Um, good information in terms of, well, it looks nice, but bad information in terms of some of the features we were hoping for and the timelines specifically. A lot of us had heard rumors and kind of were feeling pretty solid that, hey, we're going to be able to offer this new link client, uh, now Skype for Business client, by the end of calendar year 2015. That is not the case. The new Mac client should be coming out general availability in summer of 2016. Um, there will be, of course, a preview process. There will be a process for applying to the preview program in, I think, think Q2, uh, Q1, I believe, is when they're taking nominations for the preview process. So there's this long drawn out cycle of preview, et cetera. And then six months from now, hopefully this client will finally be here in GA. Now, one of the things that people like me who have really wanted Persistent Chat to be a part of this new client, we're hoping is that this new client's going to have it. And knowing that we have to wait at least another six months for it to come here, you would really expect that that would have been there. Sadly, they said more than likely, persistent chat will not be a part of this new client. For reals. So, yeah. That's a really big disappointment. Um, it, it looks nice. Okay, they showed us some some um, some screenshots of the current product, that, and they made sure to let us know this is not the finished product. It looks nice. It looks slick. They say it's going to make the PC clients have to catch up in terms of uh, how advanced it is. Clearly not in functionality in terms of extra features like persistent chat, but um, it was a very slick looking client. However, um, in terms of making Mac users first class citizens within the Skype for Business world, I would say that will happen when all the current functionality that's in a and feature set that's in a PC client is brought to the Mac client. Um, for organizations like mine, we have a huge amount of Mac users and we want to replace the tools that persistent chat replaces, but we can't because there are too many Mac users for that. And so the rest of the world is kind of waiting for the Mac client to catch up to the Windows client. And, and hopefully that'll that'll come down the pipe sometime later next year or sometime in the future. In the meantime, I guess it's IRT. 
I did have it pointed out though that uh, a workaround of that would be to uh, to have your Mac users uh, ha use a Skype for Business client, a Windows Skype for Business client that is published via remote apps. Um, it is a workaround, not the cleanest of workarounds, but it is a workaround. So if you really needed to get there, you could set up a a remote uh, remote app for Skype for Business for your Mac users, and they could get persistent chat functionality that way. But uh, anyway, that's the news on the Mac client. Some of us are happy, some of us are disappointed, and I, I hope that when it finally comes out, it'll really deliver in a lot more areas than we're currently looking at it delivering. So uh, going beyond that, beyond the Mac client, there were a couple more things I wanted to touch on in my quick 15 minute time frame here. And while I'm on this, looking at Twitter here for this, I apologize. I am late today. Uh, Mark Vale out there called me out uh, Twitter, and uh, let me know Thanksgiving is no excuse to not have episode seven out there. And I agree wholeheartedly, Mark. Uh, I, I am late today. I apologize for that. Uh, but like I told him, better late than never. And uh, he let me know that my uptime is still 99.99%. And uh, that is better than the Office 365 stats for the last quarter, which made me feel good. So, and kind of a zinged Office 365. So anyway, uh, th thanks for the positive words, Mark. Thanks for keeping me on my toes. Um, I'm looking forward to the Skype show this coming January. So that's uh, Mark. Mark's uh, heading up, working on that project. And uh, th that should be pretty cool next in January, the Skype show. Check it out. Look it up. Um, all right, one of the things I wanted to point out was really quick, we talked about minimum topology in the past. I'm not gonna really go into what that is, but apparently its official name as per what I found in documentation this week is Cloud Connector Edition. So if you're looking at a min topology uh, for bringing enterprise voice features to your Office 365 Skype for Business Online users, it is called Cloud Connector Edition. Uh, so there's that. And what was the other thing I wanted to throw your guys' way that I did not put in my notes? Um, oh, yes. Prioritizing express route traffic for your Skype for Business online users. Uh, I'm going to try to this weekend get a blog post that contains all my shout outs, my honorable mentions of people I mentioned in this, in this uh, video. And I will try to place a link to the article that was shared about, you know, really getting into the nitty gritty and setting up your express route and apparently how you can go in there and uh, you know much the same way you you set up qos in your environment you can prioritize the traffic over your express route connection for different types of applications or different types of uh, different types of like skype for business online so that's pretty cool um that, that's a really neat thing i mean express route is a cool uh cool thing in the first place setting up that direct fast connection to your Azure environment, uh, but being able to prioritize traffic per the needs of your environments over that route, that, that's, that's pretty cool and pretty powerful stuff. Uh, having tight control over your networking is important. So uh, to be honest, I, I didn't get down very far <laughs> into that article. I didn't make it too deeply. It, it, uh, it got a little busy right when I saw that on Twitter. So I can't go into detail on what was going on there, but I, the gist of it was that you could, con, you know, you had some tighter control over uh, the priority of that traffic. So be sure to check that out. Um, all right. I guess that is about it for now. I don't have a whole lot else that I planned on touching on. Um, those were the few notes I wanted to make. Uh, hopefully next week I will uh, I'll probably, I don't know, I'll have to see how, how audio sounded with the headset and everything. But uh, uh, maybe next week we'll be back to the cowboy hat and uh, and regular regular microphone. So Thanks, guys. Uh, again, sorry for being late today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please let me know your thoughts. Please let me know if I misquoted something or called something out in an incorrect way. And um, yeah, I hope the rest of you enjoy probably what is the middle of your lengthy Skype for, or <laughs> like Skype for Business weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, uh, for those of you in, in the U.S. And uh, to everybody else, I just hope you enjoy your weekend. And I hope you will tune back in Friday next week. So. Thanks. Have a good weekend.